What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah More Parties. You can find my written work and my rankings of running backs for Devi Dynasty and Rookie Drafts at NoahMoreParties.com. And today's video is me looking at landing spots and the shakeout of potential landing spots for some of the rookie running backs in this year's class based on where they are most commonly mock drafted to by members of the media. That That's what it is. <laughs> Let's get into it. So for the purposes of this video, I went to nflmockdraftdatabase.com and you can go to specific players and it lists I don't I don't remember how many mock drafts it was it was like up to 20 mock drafts for each player uh depending on how many times they were actually mocked by members of the media not just random dudes on you know firing off mock drafts on their blogs or whatever but like actual media members putting together actual mock drafts you, you can go to Bijan Robinson and look at all of his mock drafts and he was mocked five times to the Lions two times to the Cardinals five times to the Chargers three times to the Cowboys, Bucks, Falcons, y you count them up and then you can find where he is most commonly, what, what teams is he most commonly mocked to. So I went, I went through there and there are six running backs currently by consensus who are being mocked in the first two days of the NFL draft. And that is Bijan Robinson, Jameer Gibbs, Zach Charbonnet, Devon A. Chain, Tajay Spears, Zach Evans. So I went to these six running backs, found where they were most highly mocked to, assigned them those landing spots, and we're going to talk about team fit, what I would do with uh, the top of my running back rankings if these specific scenarios shook out. And the first guy is Bijan Robinson, who was mocked five times each at the top spot to the Detroit Lions and the LA Chargers. And I'm going to say LA Chargers. Uh, that's what we're going with, given that David Montgomery is now in Detroit. Uh, it seems unlikely that they would add Bijan Robinson to a backfield that already has both Montgomery and DeAndre Swift. So let's say the Chargers take Bijan Robinson. In this video, I'm going to go through my expectations for the player's role at four different points. Uh, week one, I think Bijan would start the season in week one as like the 1A with Austin Eckler either off the team or assuming Eckler's there, Bijan is the 1A, Eckler is the 1B. I think he supplants Austin Eckler immediately, but doesn't immediately like take over the entire backfield. By midseason, he would be the bell cow and would be the bell cow presumably for the foreseeable future for the Los Angeles Chargers. Last year, the Chargers ran like 45, it was like a 45-55 split in favor of zone concept runs. Bijan, I think, is fairly equivalently suited to like a gap or a zone, zone scheme. That's not based on what the Chargers did. That's based on what Kellen Moore did the last couple of seasons. About a 45-55 split in favor of zone. As a receiver, I'm not sure that this is the absolute best spot for Bijan. It's nice because Justin Herbert obviously has a propensity to throw to running backs. Austin Eckler has been a check down machine. Justin Herbert targets all of running backs in general on the Chargers the last couple of years at higher than average uh, per route rates. So he's peppering running backs with targets uh, relatively often. But Kellen Moore has not been a super creative play designer for running backs. Last year, Tony Pollard had 14th percentile route diversity. Like the the what, what sort of variety was in his route tree? 14th percentile among all NFL running backs in like the last five, six years. So he's got a an explosive pass catching former college wide receiver in his backfield who is a beast on a per touch basis and he's not being very creative with him in the passing game at all. That would be a little bit of a, disapp a disappointment for Bijan, but he would probably still get a lot of work uh, given that Justin Herbert would be his quarterback and he's a talented pass catcher anyway. So I, I would give that fit like a B. Uh, but based on mock drafts, that's where the the, the media members are saying Bijan is likely to go. Detroit, L.A., a lot of other uh, landing spots sprinkled in, but L.A. I think is the one that is both the most mocked and makes the most sense. Uh, the next next highest drafted guy in these mocks is Jameer Gibbs, who is overwhelmingly mocked to the Philadelphia Eagles. Out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight potential landing spots that these mocks had for him, 14 mock drafters uh, had him with the Eagles. The next highest is the Saints, 
with seven mock drafts to the Saints, and then like the Bills and Cowboys at four each. But overwhelming majority of mock drafts have uh, Jameer Gibbs going to the Eagles, which would be a decent fit. I think week one, he would start out at the, as the 1B in this backfield. Rashad Penny, presumably then, would be the early down guy with Gibbs being sprinkled in on third downs, some early down work between the 20s. I think by midseason, Gibbs would be the 1A and would be the 1A going forward. I don't think he's ever a a three down bell cow in his NFL career. I think he maxes out as a 1A and we're in on him in good situations as the 1A. The Eagles were a 60% zone team. Jalen Hurts was a large part of their rushing game, obviously. They opened wide lanes uh, with both their offensive line and Jalen Hurts and the scheme. So this, this would be a good situation, a zone-heavy team with a running quarterback and a good offensive line. That would be a really nice fit for Gibbs on the ground. The receiving fit, not as good. Uh, th- this particular regime has not been very creative with their usage of running backs in the passing game. Not very high volume. Gainwell in 2021, Kenny Gainwell was used both creatively and targeted frequently on a per-route basis in 2021. But other than that, this regime has not shown a desire to use running backs creatively in the passing game or often in the passing game. Gainwell's usage took a step back last year, and nobody else really on this team, at running back at least, has seen varied or creative usage. I would imagine if they take Gibbs, then they would have that that sort of vision for him. We just haven't seen them do... We've seen them do that with Gainwell, but then even though Gainwell can do that, he was effective as a receiver in 2020, 2021 as a rookie, I think Gibbs could step into that same role. They would just have to, like, bring it back for him. But also, Jalen Hurts is a running quarterback. He does designed rushes, but he also is a scrambler. Those kinds of guys don't check down to running backs a ton. Gibbs would have to be, like, a schemed part of the passing game for most of his targets, I think, or at least a higher portion of his targets than other running backs because he's not going to have the same dump-off opportunities that a lot of other guys are going to get in situations where they aren't playing with such a good rushing quarterback. So that would be, you know, maybe a, a B landing spot overall because I don't think the receiving uh, fit is ideal. Uh, but obviously a really good offense. Uh, the next guy, Zach Charbonnet, would be the RB3 Uh, As far as draft position in this class, if this were to shake out, most mock drafters had him going to, I believe, uh, New Orleans. Where is it? New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans. The Saints. Alvin Kamara, but who knows what goes on with his uh, legal situation, disciplinary situation from the NFL. And then with then Jamal Williams, I think he starts out the season as the 1B to Jamal Williams in the scenario. Jamal Williams is just a veteran who the Saints know is going to be reliable, dependable, consistent, not fuck up. He can do basic things in the passing game and also carry the load between the tackles, assuming Alvin Kamara is uh, suspended. If Alvin Kamara is not suspended, then I think Charbonnet starts the season as a committee back. And even if he starts the season as the 1B to Jamal Williams, whenever Kamara rejoins the team, it's going to revert back to Zach Charbonnet as part of a committee uh, because I don't think he eats into Alvin Kamara's workload the same way that he would eat into Jamal Williams' workload, even if he becomes the clear RB2 supplanting Williams. And if he hasn't supplanted Williams by then, then this is a three-headed backfield where Charbonnet is, at best, maybe like 40% of it. By next season, Kamara's maybe gone. I don't remember what exactly is going on with Jamal Williams' contract, but I think even if Jamal Williams is still on the team 2024 week one, Charbonnet by that time would probably be the 1A in this backfield assuming they move on from Alvin Kamara. This is also a relatively zone-heavy running game, 60% last season. I think Charbonnet can be a zone runner. I don't think he's the best zone runner in this class, but I don't think that's like a... I don't think that's putting, you know, a square peg into a round hole. And this would be an A receiving fit. Uh, Good volume, good uh, per-route target rates, good diversity, a strong history of receiving usage for running backs in this system with, I think they're who's their offensive coordinator, Pete Carmichael or whatever, from the Sean Payton. Like, we know that the Saints involve their running backs in the passing game and have schemed up guys, schemed up guys in creative ways before. I don't think Charbonnet is necessarily at the point right now in his, his development where he deserves creative usage, but they at least are willing to use running backs in the passing game, and he can grow in an environment where lots of running backs have been successful pass catchers in recent history. So solid landing spot if he ends up with the Saints, where a lot of mock drafters think he will. The next guy is A-Chain, Devon A-Chain. Most mock drafters had him going to Dallas, where I think week one, he would start as the clear RB2 behind Tony Pollard. I think he would play 
ahead of Ronald Jones. I don't think they necessarily want to run Tony Pollard into the ground, um, although he is on the franchise tag. But I think for the effectiveness of their offense, they probably want to run two guys. Mike McCarthy has done that even without Kellen Moore, going back to his time in Green Bay. By midseason, I would view this as like a 1B, 1A situation with uh, A-Chain as the 1B, Pollard as the 1A. Guys who can kind of do similar things as each other, but just uh, have different different frames. This is also a pretty significantly zone-heavy scheme based on what they did last year, as well as based on what McCarthy was doing uh, with the Packers uh, back before he was with Dallas and Kellen Moore, like 60 to 65% zone. That's perfect for what A-Chain does. He can be a gap runner, but a zone running scheme is, I mean, he's a good decision maker, and especially outside zone, he can just plant and go. Uh, I like that for A-Chain. I would give that a C in receiving landing spot. Uh, this might be, m- maybe I'm wrong, but this seems like an underreported element of Kellen Moore leaving, where Mike McCarthy has not used running backs in the passing game like Kellen Moore has been willing to. At least it, as far as per route target rates, these guys aren't being put in spots where they're they're being targeted frequently um, on, a, on a per route basis. The uh, level of creativity and variety in their route, in their route trees has not been very high. They've got Brian Schottenheimer as their new offensive coordinator to replace Mike McCarthy. If you look back to McCarthy's time in Green Bay and Schottenheimer's time in Seattle, Their last seasons with those teams, I believe, were both in 2018 uh, with Aaron Jones and Chris Carson as the lead running backs. Aaron Jones and Chris Carson both nearly doubled their their target totals from 2018 to 2019 while losing McCarthy and Schottenheimer and going on to different offensive play callers, different offensive designers. We have a history of both McCarthy and Schottenheimer uh, underutilizing running backs who can contribute in the passing game to various degrees. I'm not confident that he'll use A-chain and Pollard to their full potential. Uh, The next guy is Tajay Spears, who most mock drafters have going to the Bears. I think he would start week one as a committee back with Khalil Herbert, uh, Deontay Foreman probably sprinkled in, Travis Homer, uh, not a big name, but I know everybody in Seattle loves this guy for all like the little things that he was able to do. And he kind of is the same archetype of player like a a, a rocked up third down guy, sort of like Ty J. I think Ty J. Spears is way better in space, isn't so much of like a do the little things right, but they they would eat into each other's playing time a little bit because Travis Homer is like a reliable third down type, even if that's just catching swing passes and pass blocking well. He would eat into Ty J. Spears' playing time, I think, at least early on. I think as the season went on, Ty J. Spears could establish himself as the 1B behind Khalil Herbert, maybe even start the next season as the 1A, but short-term production I don't think would be great in Chicago. Not a great scheme fit. This this is a team that skews slightly zone-heavy in the running game. I don't think Tajay Spears is a particularly good decision maker at the line of scrimmage. Great in space. I was less impressed by his kind of cerebral and technical skills in the backfield. And receiving fit, this is kind of a a, a D. Uh, this offense gave David Montgomery and Khalil Herbert a combined 42 targets last year, not using their running backs in the passing game very much, not using them creatively. Uh, Justin Fields is a runner before he is a check down thrower. J Spears is not a big dude. He's going to need to play on third downs. And he, if he lands in Chicago, that's not a team that's going to unlock him in the passing game uh, to the degree that he would need in order to be like a a useful fantasy asset. Uh, And then the last guy here of the six is Zach Evans, who most mock drafters have to the Dolphins, which I would absolutely love. I think he would start the season as a committee back with, you know, Raheem Mostert. Uh, I believe they brought back Jeff Wilson. Uh, Miles Gaskin's still there. I think they kind of moved on from him as far as being like a legitimate role player. But I think Evans would be sprinkled in with most with Mostert and Wilson, and by midseason, I would imagine that the talent would rise to the top, and he would at least be the 1B to a really solid, really reliable veteran runner in one of those guys. I think Mostert, you know, maybe he's getting old. Uh, Wilson is solid. Like, I, I, I wouldn't bet on Evans being the 1A by midseason, but I would, I would, and I don't know which guy he wouldn't supplant. It seems like a responsible to expect him to be the 1B by midseason, maybe by the end of the season be the 1A, and be the 1A going into next year. This is a scheme, a Shanahan-style scheme, where they run 60% zone, a lot of outside zone, and I think that is is pretty damn good for Evans. I know that Matt Waldman has compared him to both Dalvin Cook and Clinton Portis stylistically. Those are excellent zone runners. I've, I've seen him compared to Elijah Mitchell, who thrived in the Shanahan scheme. I've seen him compared to Raheem Mostert a little bit, based on his like coming into the combine, severely undersized. I think Evans is a, is a good decision maker 
Um, I think his his vision issues at the line of scrimmage have been overstated quite a bit. I think he can be a successful zone runner on this team. I would be fully in on him with the Dolphins. And the Shanahan tree has historically used running backs creatively in the passing game. Tua is a fairly high volume check down quarterback, at least on a per route basis. Um, they had The Dolphins had four running backs with at least 20 targets last season. This is a team and a system willing to use running backs in the passing game. Zach Evans isn't there yet with the, the concentration drops and things like that. But I think, you know, he was targeted. His ADOT in college was over two yards downfield. Like, I think he can be used creatively in the passing game if he's able to fix the drop issues. So this is an area where, you know, he can kind of grow into being a pass catcher. But if all of this comes to pass, I think Bijan would be my 101 still. The Chargers landing spot is a good enough offense and an ascendable enough depth chart despite Austin Eckler being there, let that like nothing about that situation should cause us to move off of Bijan as the 101. Gibbs would be like a late first for me in Philadelphia. Zach Evans would be an early second for me in, in Miami. I think that's just a beautiful spot for his skill set. Uh, and the rest of those guys like Charbonnet and A-Chain, probably like mid second. Those aren't probably places where they can get immediate production in New Orleans and Dallas, but you know, kind of their roles can grow and maybe we'll see what it looks like next season with Alvin Kamara and maybe Pollard gone. Uh, and then Ty J Spears would be a late second in Chicago for me. Like I don't view him as a better runner than Khalil Herbert. I think Ty J Spears is a good runner, but uh, Khalil Herbert's been a, a stud on a per carry basis in the NFL. I think he would be the one B as a runner and then one A as a pass catching back probably, but the opportunity to be a pass catching back on a Justin Fields-led offense is not great. So there it is, most likely landing spots perhaps based on media mock drafts uh, and how I would kind of view those landing spots in general and uh, these these team fits to these players. So yeah, I don't know, hit like, hit subscribe, go to nomoreparties.com and see you on Saturday. Peace.